Okay, as promised, we're back with Kate's knee and she's got the non-operative ACL rupture on this one. So she is super stable. She is not going for an operation at the moment. She is just going for rehab. That's the one there. Now, good things about Kate, she's feeling a lot stronger this week. So she's got her forward extension back. She can extend her knee, squeeze her quad. She is going to a sort of week eight, nine her exercises. So at this stage, she's right on target. She still hasn't got her full flexion. We're gonna work on that. Think about when you don't have an ACL. So when you full rupture, you're gonna have a sort of a little bit of, well, two things, you can have two things. Will you enter medial sort of pain and niggle this side and a posterior lateral pain up the top on this side. And that's basically the direction of that ACL. So if you're missing that, what's gonna happen is this knee wants to sort of turn and rotate a little bit more than it should say on this side. And you'll notice when we go into our single leg deadlift, when she has to learn stability and use her hamstrings, she finds it hard on this leg because there's two things going on. One, she's missing the ACL, which means the physical, actual tightness of holding one bone to the other on an angle, enter immediately, is not there. But she's also missing some messaging from that ACL to the brain about movement. So she's got to relearn that. So that's what we're going to do that stuff today. So. On her single leg deadlift, let's look at that first. This is the new one she's doing this week, so she's just learning this, is when you're doing this one, opposite hand, opposite leg. So she's standing on this leg, she's gonna have weight on this arm, all right? Her left arm goes out for a bit of counterbalance. When she drops down, if you go through for that, Kate, what we're looking for is to see what that knee's doing. Now on her, come back up, just go through reps for that. Her knee tends to wobble inwards a little bit, which is that classic knee instability. So she's got to work hard on trying to get her knee actually going a bit more laterally as she goes down to keep it in the center to stop it rolling in. A little bit of wobble is okay, but we don't want this sort of, we don't want this diving in looking this way, okay? We want to keeping it out. And that's no, you know, is that weak with it? Well, like I said, she's missing the ACL, so she's missing messaging, so she's going to have to learn to get stronger through the hip, more control through the hip and the quad and the hamstring to keep that knee. Now, if you swap that on the other side, what you'll notice is on this side, she's just super stable, okay? So she's normally, well, she's warmed up, right? <laughs> when she does this one, she will find that this just feels better. The hard thing about the single leg deadlift is, unlike a squat where you bend forward, like you let the tibia go forward, you move the ankle, she's now learning, I have to stabilize the ankle so that doesn't move out of position the tibia doesn't move out of position. Once she comes from straight to a little bit bent forward, the movement is a hinge on the femur on the tibia. So she's learning to stabilize one bone and move the other. And the big, so the stabilization of that, the quad is gonna help with that, the hamstring is gonna help with that, plus the hamstring's doing hip extension, okay? So she's doing a lot of work up in her hip, which is what we want, okay? But the big thing is to learn can you stabilize that? There's a whole thing about stability. Can you stabilize and not just let it flop forward like on a squat? So go on to the left one, swap that again. Let's have a look at that. And you know, things that make it harder are a VMO here, quads that are not as good, but her big thing is hamstrings. If we get this exercise done, she's gonna have more hamstring strength, more control of the tibia, stop it translating forward because there's no ACL. So this hamstring work is so important for her she's combining it in a single leg deadlift for stability of the knee as well. Remember, she's a skier, she needs to sort of not be in this position, but she needs to be able to be strong on one leg without that knee collapsing inwards. So this is the start of what she's gonna improve on. And like I said, you know, she, her aim is to get as good as her right leg over time. Slowly, slowly, slowly chip away at that. So the other thing she's working on is trying to get um, a little bit more um, load through this quad in total knee extension. So she's gonna use her band. Before she was just using a ball to switch it on and activate it, now she's doing reps. Come over here for me, okay? So if she puts that in her left leg, yeah. what she finds difficult is when she goes into full total knee extension, she gets a little bit of a niggle in the front. So she's just gotta stay away from that until that settles down, until she gets enough strength and enough control. Um, through that. She's just getting that because there's a little bit of movement going on between the tibia and the femur because of that lack of the ACL. She's trying to relearn that through quads, hamstrings, hip, that sort of thing. When she's doing this, the crucial thing is weight bearing here more than there, all right? And then weight bearing down through the heel. So if she can push down through the heel, get a little bit of hip extension, it'll help the movement of that femur. And then that quad will then pull the tibia 
backwards. All right? So she's thinking she's doing hip extension and knee extension at the same time. All right? And then trying to get as much tone through the front of that quad as she possibly can. So when she does that, she's squeezing hard to try and get as much sort of neural input into that quad and drive but always staying away from that little bit of pain. So that's um, a couple of new things she's doing. She's also working on her um, compass stability, which actually turns into a full return to sport activity later. Let's have a look at that, and you'll notice the difference left and right, and she'll sort of tell you the difference left and right. If we try the right leg first, so this is a single leg compass. This turns into, um, like I said, a, a full-on stability exercise, but she needs to bend a knee into a squat, tap the floor forward, Tap in different directions, she can go sideways. We call it sort of northeast, west, south, like a compass. She can go behind her on an angle. She can go behind her straight. She's doing all sorts of diagonals. The hardest one is the curtsy, so she's going behind. But can you see how she's just keeping that knee absolutely stable for her? Hey, she's a scare. She's got good, this is someone who's got good knee stability. She can let her knee go forward. She's got good quads. But when she does on the left one, like I said, she's missing a ligament. She's missing a little bit of strength and she's missing a little bit of confidence. And you can see how automatically she goes a little bit slower, she finds it a little bit more difficult, and there's not really pain there, but a sense of weakness, mm. right? And you can see where her knee wobbles a little bit, and so she has to go a little bit slower to control it. If she goes too fast, she hasn't got enough sort of feedback to control it, so she has to go slow. And again, this knee stability type exercise is super important for her because she's doing a sport on one leg, and she's going to just work hard on this repetition, repetition, repetition to get it right. Because it's not just about strength for her, it's about relearning knee stability without an ACL. And that's going to be one of the biggest challenges, but something that's already improving. So we're staying on that bus. Okay, so a couple of more few knee stability exercises. The big thing we're also trying to work on is helping her with her knee flexion. So she's going to do a quad stretch, and I'll show you the difference with a quad stretch from that. When she does her quad stretch, because the quads are tight, pop over there for you. Okay, she's going to go and do. Wait, you go, okay. You go down into that quad stretch for me. So kneeling on the ground. Now, with this, I'll show you. She's trying to do a rectus femoris stretch. Okay, so she needs to make sure here in this part here, she's not in so much flexion that it hurts in that posterior lateral corner. Okay, we don't want her pain immediately when she's doing this, it's not gonna work. She wants to be feeling quad stretching here, okay? So she's gotta do hip extension, she's gotta clench her buttocks, she's got almost anterior tilt of pelvis, she's gotta turn her core on, she's gotta be tall, gets the front of that. Because the release of the quad is gonna help her knee flexion, it's also gonna help her quad strength, so that's gonna be quite important. And it does tighten up when you've got things like this. Now, the flexion range is a little bit different. She's gotta lean forward, and what she's gotta try and do is go from forward and then push her hip to her heel. And this is, she can do this. If she bends at the hip, there's no quads tightness here now, okay? So she can just focus on, can I get my knee flexion better by keeping this stable and then pushing that backwards? And she's only allowed to go up to the point where she feels that little niggle, okay? Mm -hmm. And then she backs away. So this will be reps. I'm giving her, for every quad stretch she's doing, she's gonna do about 30 of these and try and just really focus on not making it more sore, only going up to the point of the tightness, and as that improves, she can go further into range. So this is a really nice one for her. The other one we like working on is a child's pose. So the child's pose one is a little bit different. Do you want to face that way for me? Go for this way for me, Kate. Is what she's gonna try and do, if you yeah, turn around and face the other way for me, yep, you got it, is she is going to go into a child's pose stretch, which is like, yoga stretch, but she's not going to hold it, okay? This is a reps one. So again, you've got to think about how much range can she get out of this knee here, okay? And go right up to the point where she's feeling that little niggle in the back, all right? And then back away. So this is reps. She might do a little bit less than this. Sometimes you can hold these stretches a little bit longer. If they're not that painful, it's maybe just tightness. Getting as much as she can here and then backing away. It's like use it or lose it. She's trying really hard to improve range, but this sort of pain she can't force. Every time she loosens up a little bit, she gets a little bit stronger, she tries to get a little bit more range in her knee. Okay, so it's every day is that 1% that you gotta try and work on, get that consistency. So over that sort of 20 days, you go, hey, look at my knee, I've gained 20% you know, of range or whatever she needs. Um, 
And of course there'll be limits on it, but she's just got to keep chipping away at that to try and improve um, as this thing comes right. So last thing we're going to look at is her hamstrings. So go onto that bench for me, okay. Interesting with her hamstring, she's going to do heavier hamstring strengthening with full deadlifts. She's going to do heavier hamstring with a hamstring curl machine. So you just work on muscle strength because she needs it. With this one, this is more of a home one, she's going to work on range and strength at the same time, or inner range strength. Again, okay? sometimes the machines don't give you this. So this band for her cannot be super tight and make it really hard for her. The aim is not to try and do a hamstring curl and really get stuck in. She wants to go for range. If I make that too tight, she won't get up there. So, okay, pull that for me. So she goes up and she goes right up to that point of where that pain is again. So now what she's doing is knee flexion using her hamstrings to bend it. Before she was doing like that child's pose, she was doing knee flexion passive to get the range. Now she's doing an active version of it. The beauty about this is she's combining her hamstring curl at the same time. Now you are, this is what's well, a green band for legs that's pretty light, right? But she finds it's hard because what she has to do, when she starts running out of range, she has to work really hard on that muscle to pull it in. So she's getting the muscle strengthening. It doesn't have to be heavy. Um, and that's going to help her with her active range of movement. It's going to help her with her hamstring strength. It's going to help her with her stability because she's getting posterior tibial glide, but her hamstrings are pulling in. This is great stuff for her. It's a bit boring, okay? It's stuff she does probably at home rather than the gym. Um, but it's worth its weight in gold, and eventually she won't have to do this forever. She'll be doing it into harder and harder stuff, which is way, way more interesting. So there's a little snapshot of her week eight, week nine. We'll see her next time and see how she's progressing.